And what I want to do today is try to show you how that in our day-to-day -day life, many times pride comes into the way we think about things, and we may not even realize it as such. If you are a religious person, many times pride can come into your life. I know people that go to, a, you might be prideful of the church you go to. I've heard people say, well, you know, I go to the church of the you know what, and I go to this church, or I go to that church, and I go to a mega church. And we've got to really be Christians because we have thousands of people show up every Sunday. And I belong to a mega church, and I must be better than your church. On the other side of the coin, I've heard people that go to a church with relatively small numbers, and they are prideful of that. Well, I don't go to one of them mega churches. I don't agree. You know, they're just too liberal. I go to a small church. We depend, we talk about quality. I would rather be with a small church with quality Christians than one of those big churches. And so if you go to a big church, you can become proud of the fact that you go to a big church. If you go to a small church, you can become proud of the fact that you belong to a small church. If you study doctrine and theology, you can become proud of your doctrine. The Bible talks about the Word of God is the sword of the Spirit. But there are people that take the sword of the Spirit and try to kill other Christians with it. I've been in a number of debates with people. And they pull out their sword and say, I believe in predestination. The other person pulls out his sword and says, I believe in free will. And they start cutting each other up. And there are passages that make you think that predestination is preeminent. And there are passages that make you think that free will. And so you have grace and you have works. You also, I believe in grace. Well, you know, Grace without works is dead, or faith without works is dead. And so you can get into these battles over your doctrine. And you can slice people up. I have been in discussions, or debates if you will, with people that literally just almost slice each other up with the Scripture. And they will walk away, wiping off the blood, metaphorically, putting their sword in the scabbard and thinking that they have won an argument when all they have really done is made somebody think, I never want to be like that person. I'm reminded of the joke of the two kids that were talking about the race of Jesus, the ethnicity of Jesus. And one of them said, well, you know, Jesus was Jewish. He was a Jew. And the other little boy said, well, Jesus might be Jewish, but God's a Baptist. A lot of people feel like that. I'm proud that I'm a Baptist. I'm proud that I'm Presbyterian. I'm proud that I'm Methodist. I'm proud that I'm Church of Christ. I'm proud that I'm Pentecostal. I'm proud that I'm Catholic, buddy. I'm, we're better than you are. You're just a second class. And let me tell you why. And so we can become proud of our doctrine. We can become proud of our church. We can become proud of so many things. 